Funding for Shape Realist is provided by Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Hey gang, so I watched the 2022 Oscars and they were just so beyond abysmal. Just absolutely f***ing terrible. I've been watching the show for the past 10 years straight and this is the worst one I've seen yet. Let me just run through everything real quick. So, before the show happened, these chuckle f**ks decided they weren't gonna do every category live, and instead they'd relegate eight quote-unquote less important technical categories to the pre-show. Oh, but don't worry guys, we'll edit them back into the main show, it'll be seamless! It wasn't seamless. It was immediately apparent that they did these categories beforehand, and that they cut down the acceptance speeches that played on the broadcast. Among other things not being live, like Hans Zimmer's first original score win in nearly 30 years, and beloved actor Riz Ahmed winning an Oscar for Best Live Action Short Film, they cut out Best Editing. That's one of the most important categories. Without editing, you don't have a goddamn movie. They had to edit best editing into the show, and they didn't see the irony with that. What a fucking dystopian nightmare. This was all in an effort to make the show shorter and have it clock in at three hours. It ended up clocking in at three hours, 40 minutes. So they disrespected the nominees and winners in these eight categories for no reason. I bet you're wondering how the show still managed to go on for so long, even after they cut all those categories. Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. Well, it's because they had to make room for the funny! They had to have three hosts all doing terrible stand-up humor, and it took like 35 minutes before they gave out a single award! Okay, so like, Wanda Sykes wasn't awful. I liked her little bit at the Oscars Museum, and she was easily the most likable of the three hosts. I think she would've been perfectly fine if she was solo hosting the show. Regina Hall had this sketch where she made it seem like there was a COVID emergency, but then it turned out it was just an excuse for her to sexually harass a bunch of dudes in the audience. Great! And then there's Amy fucking Schumer. Holy hecking fuck balls. I don't need to tell you that Amy Schumer is unfunny. Everyone agrees on that. It is the universal truth of comedy. But good god was she unbearable. From making jokes about how no one saw the nominees. Making jokes about how Academy Award nominee Kristen Dunst is just a seat filler. Making jokes about Leo's girlfriends that you've heard on Twitter and Letterboxd a million times. Oh my god, are you telling me that Amy Schumer likes to steal jokes? Oh my god, I never would have even expected that! Oh man! Also this! Okay, Jesus Christ. There was also a ton of technical problems and missed cues and just in general an air of unrivaled unprofessionalism that was embarrassing even by the standards of this increasingly pathetic ceremony. As usual, the best animated feature category was there to infantilize animation fans, with the live-action Disney princess presenters being like, Haha, isn't it great how much kids love animated movies, even though parents are forced to suffer through them, haha. <laughs> yeah man, I'm sure kids loved Flea, a horrific story of a refugee forced to escape Afghanistan in an event that traumatized him and his family. Almost as much as I loved this award coming right after they performed the Encanto song, presented by the Disney princess. And then it went to Encanto! Whoa, I can't believe it! Amazing how I can feel nothing when my third favorite movie of last year wins an Oscar. How do you do it, Disney? How are you so hateable that I was genuinely rooting against what was by far my favorite animated movie of 2021? At least they lost best song. That's a nice lesson in hubris since they didn't even submit a fun song like We Don't Talk About Bruno. Holy shit, don't even get me started on that. They're like, wow, hey guys, look, the Oscars will have the first ever live performance of We Don't Talk About Bruno. You know, that song that isn't even nominated? Come watch us, we're still relevant, oh please. So then they went ahead and entirely butchered it. Not only was the first part weirdly offbeat and uncatchy, but then they just cut the rest of the song and replaced it with a rap verse about how great the Oscars are, sung by Megan the Stallion. The fucking disrespect to the original actors and the original song is just astounding. It was such an easy slam dunk for them and they still managed to fuck it up. But what do you expect from a ceremony that basically only exists as a shitty Disney ad? Since they own ABC, the network that broadcasts the Oscars, hey, 
I'm Chris Evans. Wow, Troy Kotzer. That was a genuinely beautiful speech you gave about the deaf community and your father. Anyway, here's Lightyear coming to theaters. Oh my god, check it out. Hey, I wonder why best costume design was left live in the ceremony when other categories were cut. Oh wait, it's because Cruella was the favorite to win, and then it did win, and now the winner gets to talk about how good Cruella was. Go f yourself, Academy! And to top all of this off, the Oscars were sponsored by Crypto.com. This is not a joke. I, I, I can't believe the Academy could have a ceremony where everything, literally everything outside of the actual award winners themselves, could go wrong. Am I missing anything? Oh, yeah, of course, how could I forget? They didn't even invite Rachel Zegler, the lead of West Side Story, to the Oscars until she mentioned she wasn't invited and people rightfully made a big stink about it. Why do these fuckers hate promising young talent? Why do they hate crucial craftsmen like editors, composers, production designers, sound technicians, etc.? Why do they hate the medium of animation? Why do they hate the movies they snubbed and the movies they fucking nominated? This has got to be up there as one of the worst Oscar ceremonies of all time. And it's definitely the worst one I've seen. The only place I could think of that could be better than this is home. This is the most obnoxious thing I've ever experienced in my life. So with all that said, I bet you're wondering, why do I watch them year after year? Because, yeah, this one was particularly bad, but the ceremony in recent years has always ranged from awful to passable as long as there's no host, yet still not really all that entertaining. Why do I keep subjecting myself to this bullshit Hollywood circle jerk, where the voters absolutely do not watch all the movies and only give awards to who campaigns the hardest? Well, I have two main reasons for this. Number one, it's just a really fun hate watch. It's extremely funny to see how out of touch celebrities are with the real world. Plus, it's hilarious when things go wrong. That Moonlight La La Land fiasco was just moi, chef's kiss. Now that's television, baby. But I don't think it would have been nearly as satisfyingly horrific if I didn't see it live. Hearing about it on Twitter isn't nearly as satisfying as enduring a mediocre three hour broadcast and then getting rewarded for all my toils with such a lovely treat at the end. I am a big supporter of Hollywood embarrassing itself, and in my book, it's absolutely worth trudging through the media and awfulness in order to get a chance to witness shit like this live. Same goes for baffling Oscar wins like Bohemian Rhapsody winning Best Editing, or Green Book winning Best Picture. Like, being there to witness insane decisions like those is just incredible. It makes me enjoy ceremonies that would otherwise make me feel completely dead inside. For my money, the pure, unadulterated cringe is one of the absolute best reasons to keep tuning into the Oscars. But and I really hate to admit this, there's another, even bigger reason I keep watching this godforsaken hell show. It's for moments like this. And the Oscar goes to... Parasite. And this. Mimi, you were right. <laughs> Spider-Man into the Spider-Man. And more recently, for this. So to anybody who has ever questioned your identity, ever, 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 or find your, you find yourself living in the gray spaces, I promise you this, there is indeed a place for us. When your favorite movie, or favorite actor, or favorite director gets recognized on that stage, that's magical. And I can say that even as someone who's fully aware that the people voting on who gets these awards are full of shit. They vote for whoever it's trendy to vote for, or who campaigns the hardest. There's no reason why a movie like Come On Come On shouldn't have been up for Best Picture and Screenplay. Or a movie like French Dispatch shouldn't have been up for every single technical category. Other than the fact that their campaigns just weren't as potent, and because the Academy has hilariously short attention spans when it comes to remembering what movies even released. But it's because they get it wrong so often, that it makes it all the sweeter when they finally get something right. Whether it's because they actually watch the movies for a change, or because the best campaign just happens to be attached to the best movie. I don't know what it was. All I know is, the year Parasite won Best Director, Best Screenplay, and Best Picture, on top of the already guaranteed Best International Feature Award, was an amazing experience. The only Oscar ceremony in the past 10 years that I can safely say was a net positive. Seeing Bong Joon-ho and everyone involved in the movie get recognized like that, seeing the celebrities in the audience demand that the Oscars let them speak after they tried cutting them off prematurely, 
It was just so wonderful. And I've gone back to rewatch all four of the Parasite Oscar speeches more times than I can count. The same applies to Taika Waititi's adapted screenplay win for Jojo Rabbit. I was just so beyond happy that they honored one of my favorite movies like that. And it was just an indescribable feeling to see Taika up there, regardless of whether he won because they actually liked his screenplay the best, or because the studio campaigns the hardest. And I can say the same for so many other winners in the past few years. Spider-Verse winning Best Animated against two Disney movies was, and still is, monumental. With Lord Miller and the film's directors giving such a beautiful speech. Seeing Jordan Peele win original screenplay for Get Out, or Damien Chazelle earning Best Director, being the youngest director in history to do so, J.K. Simmons getting recognized for Whiplash, Leo finally getting a win after all these years, even if it wasn't for his most memorable performance, Chloe Zhao becoming the first woman of color to win Best Director, and second woman overall in 93 years. Holy fuck, Academy, what is wrong with you? Roger Deakins winning his first Oscar after so many years in the business, Olivia Coleman getting getting an upset win for The Favorite and delivering one of my favorite Oscar speeches ever. Lupita Nyong'o winning for her breakthrough performance. Guillermo del Toro winning Best Director. Hell, there's even a lot of wins from before I started watching that I love checking out on YouTube. Like Martin Scorsese finally winning Best Director after like 40 years. Or the monumental Return of the King Best Picture win. There's just so many cool moments that come out of this show. And it's not from any of the manufactured bullshit quote unquote funny moments that the hosts try to put on. It's from those rare moments where the people who actually deserve recognition by their peers receive it. It's less about who wins the trophy and more about who gets their moment to shine and speak in front of the entire viewing world. This year was no different because in spite of all the bullshit in the ceremony, Troy Kotzer and Ariana DeBose's speeches and chances to shine were incredibly moving and wonderful. The highlights of the night. Honestly, if I had my way, this ceremony would just be nothing but giving out awards nonstop, with a couple breaks to perform the Best Original Song nominees. That's literally all you need. We can be done in two and a half hours. But ultimately, I sit through all this nonsense because, unlike the Academy, I love film. And I love being there, watching people who genuinely deserve recognition for being at the top of their field in any given year receive that recognition. Obviously, that doesn't usually happen, but sometimes when it doesn't, it's f***ing hysterical. And when it does happen, it's movie magic. So yeah, I'm gonna keep tuning into this wonderful disaster of a show run by shallow, self-absorbed assholes. I love to hate watch this bullshit, but I love the genuinely worthwhile wins even more. Even though the Academy probably gave out those wins by complete accident. And as bad as this year's ceremony was, I sincerely hope Next year's ceremony is even worse. I hope I didn't forget to talk about anything. Hmm. Oh yeah, right, of course. Why was the In Memoriam segment a big dance number? What the f*** was going on? Okay, now I've talked about everything at this year's Oscars. Good night, Tri-State Area. Hi, I'm Chris Evans. Wow, Schaeferless Productions, that was a very epic video all about the Oscars. Anyway, here's Squarespace! I'm sorry, I'm not nearly as good as making up transitions as epic YouTuber Schaeferless Productions is. Anyway, here's Squarespace, like I said. Squarespace is a fantastic, intuitive, online website builder that allows you to create beautiful websites for your business or personal hobby. Present your work using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs. Display projects in customizable galleries and add password-protected pages to share private works with clients. You can even present your videos from YouTube, Vimeo, and Animoto on your Squarespace site. Add an image overlay to your video to improve your website's load speed by waiting to embed video players until playback starts. Every design automatically includes a unique mobile presence that matches the overall style of your website, so your content will look great on every device, every time. And if you don't want that, you can always disable the mobile view from Website Manager. Buying a domain from Squarespace is so simple because there are no hidden fees or price hikes. Each domain comes with an ad-free parking page and free WHOIS privacy on eligible domains. Squarespace sells over 200 top-level domains so you can find the perfect name for your website. Choose a URL that ends in .com, .net, .org, or you can always get a more specific one like .art if you want to be fancy. If you're ready to share your passions or promote your business with the rest of the world, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. 